Shalom greetings in the name of the Lord Yeshua. I want to do a promise video part two of the video that has to do with King Jehoshaphat that went into marriage, from marriage to banquet, from banquet to war, and almost to his death. If not for the grace of God upon his life. And it's very applicable to us today because this is still the same, you know, one in which you take heed to, according to James 4 4. We should know God's enemies. As I was just preparing for this, I said, it's The problem is like, what's the problem? Is it that we don't know the enemies of God because they are now behaving like our friends, coming subtly while having their own secret meeting, you know? darkness meeting to keep us in this limbo of everything is okay shalom 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 the lord is good and his mercy and just forever praise the lord the lord is good and his mercy and just forever today i just want to go straight and complete the part two of a you know video that i've done before that has to do with are you a joshua and i put like love sign there type of believer Joshua was one of the good kings of Judah after Israel had split into two. Ten tribes mainly on one side, following fake Geo, Jeroboam back to Holy and Ghost as they went from Bethel to Dam. But the two faithful tribes were the tribe of Judah, thankfully, from whom we have our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Judah, Israel. Hebrew father coming through that tribe of Judah and to Judah only as the truth of God's word be entrusted. Romans 3 verse 2. So the truth is that Dan is preaching as Pharisees or mega churches. Esau is proclaiming himself as he supplants himself over our body as flesh. So Esau is all lies. Just lies. If you are believing Esau and you are clapping for him, it's because you are always showing your own side of flesh to Esau. So you made you clap. It's almost like somebody is flaunting a fake coin to you. Ah, that coin is beautiful. Ah, see how they shape it. Well, until you see the original before you know that all the while you've been admiring a fake coin. But for me to just go straight, so I thought I should just complete this part two. That has to do with this topic that I was asking. Are you a Joshua type of, you know, believer or child of God? I was like that until the Lord used Jehoshaphat's um, warning to be a warning to me too, indirectly. In Second Chronicles 19, 1-3. That says, should you do good to the wicked? Since there are some people that may appear righteous. According to Matthew 23, 28, but they are very wicked. So, if they come like that, how will we know? We don't know whether they are wicked, they are not. There are sometimes, if you don't know, just do good. Just give them. Bless your enemy. Give to those who ask of you. If you see your brother angry, give to them. But there are some that the Lord will make clear that ah, these people are doing what's annoying God, though. They have become enemy of God, though. Then, at that point, that you realize we are enemies of God. <laughs> Be staying yourself apart, away from them, onto the right side of the Lord. If not, you'll be judged according to James 4, 4 that says, anyone that makes himself friend of the world or friend of the wicked, because Esau is the world and is the father of wickedness. According to Ezekiel 7.24, so if you know a wicked person, a worldly person seeking your help, you better preach to them first. And uh, how they receive the word of God you preach to them will determine whether you are supposed to continue to offer any help. Because if they reject the word of God, the teachings of God, the preachings of the gospel of God, then you are supposed to dust your feet and move on. If you go back and do good to them, you may well be judged. According to James 4, 4, as an enemy of God. So, I thought let me make sure of my promises being on my mind. So, we read in part 1, 2 Chronicles 18, from 
verse 1 to the end, and then the first three verses of 2 Chronicles 19. Where we see that Ahab was the current king over the ten tribes of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, king Jehoshaphat, was the current king over the two other side of the tribes of Israel that were obeying God. Majority were disobedient. A few were obedient. It's similarly always been like that. So when you see many people, you know, going the broad way of holy to ghost, better to them. Joining uh, Lucifer Francis and uh, connecting as a uh, fake G O Adeboye, who was never called to be a pastor, you know, just to serve the agenda of the new world order. If you see them, many, many, the word of God has told you in Exodus 22 too. Do not follow the crowd, nor the multitude, even of God's people who are busy going to Broadway. Because the truth is that through psychology, many people will naturally move towards the multitude than the few. But make sure that even when you are moving with the few, it's not the few wicked. So let it be the few godly people, the few righteous. And God can also raise in a time a type of multitude selectively, you know, do his will. Then go with them. It's about judging whether that place has the presence of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, at least the willingness to obey God must be there before you follow. But don't just follow because you say, ah, if I go to that place, ah, I will sell my lace. So if I go there, I will just give my car to many women. My business will move. Because some people, they have ulterior motives for coming to so-called congregation of God's people. Let us check our motives so that we are not judged. According to James 4, 1 to 4, God was saying that you ask, you don't receive. Um, because what you are acting, you want to spend it on your flesh, your body flesh or your flesh. It's not about your spirit body. It's about your body flesh. God will not give something spirit body for you to go and use on your body flesh. This kind of what uh, King Solomon did, he received the wisdom to lead the spiritual children of God aright. But he began to turn that wisdom to acquire, how can I acquire as though many wives without them fighting each other, killing each other. Up to a thousand women, 700 wives and 300 concubines he had. According to 1 Kings chapter 11, let me just confirm that. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 2, or verse 1 to 2. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women. You are not supposed to love foreign women as Israelites. That's just it. Why are you not reading your Bible? Because it's just, it's just sad that when you bring these issues, these verses out, some just do as if it's you still talking. They still don't want to look into their Bible, it seems. So annoying. However, King Solomon loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter. Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from countries about which the Lord had told the Israelites, had told the Israelites to not intermarry with them. You say God is the same Yesterday, today, forever. So why are you changing this word? There's a place where God can give a spiritual gift and some people just are phone it for their own physical needs. So when James 4, 1 to 4 was saying, you act and you do not receive, because when you, you act or whatever you are acting is to gratify your fleshly carnal desires. And God does not want us to be focused on our Body, flesh, or flesh. Oh, Father, give me money for eyelash. The wedding is coming up. Give me money for fake nails. I want to do my hair in one million braids. Oh, Father God, that's stepping gaily. Father God, I need a new one. God will not answer because your motive is all to spend it on your carnal desires. 
God wants us to be heavenly focused. God give me money. I want to buy Bibles to go and give all my neighbors who say they don't have Bible. Then God will hear and give the money if he knows that you will use the money for the Bible. Because even if you have a good hmm, prayer point, but God knows that this one, if I release this money to her, to him now, he's going to divert it and be giving excuse. Yes, God may delay it. So let us fine tune ourselves, you know, as in completely surrendering ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And then our prayers will be heard more. If there's no sin in our life. So, Second Chronicles chapter 18, we see Joshua, who was on the lost side. I am on the lost side. I will never give up. I am an overcomer. For the Lord God is on my side. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was on the lost side, side of those who came to go to the temple to worship the Holy One of Israel, Jacob Israel, the Abu Jacob Israel. They were worshiping him in holiness, in righteousness, in truth, and the Lord was with them. Second Chronicles 25, 7, the Lord was no more with the ten tribes. After about 400 years of warning, the Lord allowed the enemy by... Uh, Assyrian captivity to come and capture them away. Of course, some of them remained there and they were crossbred with the Assyrians. They said that of um, the man that was a mighty hunter before the Lord, Nimrod. So you see, some of those who were crossbred over and over by the time, all sorts of people in that side of the ten tribes of Israel, for which even in the New Testament we see a sorcerer. Everything was allowed in that side. Sorcerer, shrine, golden calf. Geo Jeroboam brought it back. A man that started so humble seemingly. Now, after even he was even anointed by a prophet of God. After barely being anointed, he began to be paranoid. Hey, now that the kingdom has been split into two, ten and two. And he had ten tribes. He was thinking if he allows the ten tribes to go and worship in the temple, they will begin to divert their attention to the son of Solomon, Rehoboam, who had two tribes. Their names seem similar, so he began to say, Ah, oh, there's no need to go to the temple. And the moment you are turning yourself from the temple, whatever way you want to, you know, see it, you are turning against life. You become evil. You go the evil way. Or from Bethel, he allowed them to worship. From Bethel to Dan, they should go anywhere in that side to go and worship God. Anywhere, shrine, whatever it is, fake altar. The likes of the fake altar he was even being warned of. And let me see. By a young man of God, sent by the Lord as a young prophet, to go and warn that Jeroboam, as he was doing a form of godliness. He established his own laws, his own whatever, but God was not there. To some, he looked like the original, because these ones have been worshipping the temple, they knew some of the things there. So they tried to do a form of <laughs> their own religious version. And the Lord has warned us, those who have a form of godliness, Denying the power of God, we should run from them. So, yes, according to First King 13, that's when a young man of God was sent to go and warn Jeroboam. And that altar was split apart. The altar wherein King Jeroboam was busy offering strange sacrifice to who? God will not accept that. Those are the burnt offering, all these things that God will not accept. You have to do it God's way. God wants us to do whatever we are doing His way. So that's why it's good to study to show ourselves approval unto Him. Study His word and making sure we know His way before we proceed. Even to the faithful disciples, the Lord said, it has to be His own way. I know I've called you. I know I've called you to go to the ends of the earth. From Jerusalem to Judah to Samaria to the ends of the earth. To preach the goodness of salvation. But... Wait for my Holy Spirit. So, 
Those who go now, for instance, in this end time, who have been called, they behave like Jeroboam. They just go rushing into, they think they know how uh, this Jew has done it, that general trended has done it. All these titles that God did not give us. Bishop, Archbishop. No, the titles the Lord knows <laughs> is the title that won't finish many. Because since the Lord said, Who are my apostles, my pastors, my prophets, my evangelists, my teachers? Stand on this side. Any other title now, so so yeah, yeah. Any other title now, so so down below. As we go from that better to down, from holy to ghost. So we see also what's happening on the other side of the ten tribes, Samaria area, very large area, where you up to the New Testament time of the Lord Yeshua commissioning his faithful disciples after they became apostles. They met a sorcerer in Acts chapter 8, 9 to 25. That's the area of the woman also of John chapter 4, who was by the well whom the Lord Yeshua was trying to evangelize, you know, because they were still part of Israel. And by the time his blood was shed, if they can come and face themselves away from their churches, face themselves away and become the temple they are. So Martin said we are church members, church members. Church was started by Romans. How can God receive that? There's a lot of deception. There's a lot of deception going on. Let us you know, wake up and realize that we are the temple of the living God. First Corinthians 3, 16. First Corinthians 6, 19. Second Corinthians 6, 16. So we are the living temples of God. So in Second Chronicles chapter 18, Joshua went from marriage alliance with a wicked family, with anybody from that side that the Lord is no more with them, they have disobeyed God. Some of us, we know some people are not living right. Yet, we want to do this goody, goody, good, 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 uh, loving Joshaphat type of uh, mindset. We want to love everybody. So, in that second Chronicles 18, we see Joshaphat going to the side of Ahab. What are you looking for? In the house of Ahab, in the house of the wicked. I go to preach to them, you went to marry to them. Let us be mindful of the family we are marrying into. This family of many ones who are church members. Uh, let's quickly do the church so that uh, this is this. Some people have many ulterior motives for why they are even having their you know, wedding this way, that way. Anyway, Joshua went from marriage to banquet, from banquet to war, from war to almost his death. If not that God loves him. There are some people that God loves. There are some good in them. Not because they are completely good, but, you know, they still annoy God. So when the Lord said, go and warn your youngest son to repent or perish, you know, I see spiritually that, thank you, Lord. There are so many, perhaps trillions or billions of ones whom the Lord does not even bother to want. He doesn't want them. They are not his. They belong to Lucifer. They belong to Dan. They belong to Esau. All the ways Satan and Lucifer have manifested themselves. So you are looking at those ones to let them influence you when you are the treasures of the earth. This is the dilemma. If you are confused about who are of God, who are not of God, you think all of us are in this together. We are all children of God because you see them preaching. Is that not how Lucifer was tempting the Lord your God? You think Lucifer is the one to think he has the audacity to be telling the Lord his God? Why don't you fall yourself down? The angels which take charge of you, foolish one, to show that Lucifer was not an angel, an embodiment of flesh. And when he pieces himself, it was many, many pieces of Esau. And came. And as he drew closer, we came down the Pharisee. So, 
We need to understand that the Lord God Almighty wants us to be set apart unto Him. Once you say, I have decided to follow you, Lord. The thing is that many of us sing that song. No turning back, no turning back. But do we really mean it? Sincerely. We say turn back. We say go back to the perfume. We go back to the this, to the that. And let me tell you, do not ever measure the perfume of all times of the scripture which were rich ointment. Don't confuse the perfume of Easter and the rich ointment of alabaster jam used to, you know, wipe the feet of the Lord Yeshua by that woman. Also, never confuse the John chapter 2 wine that was turned from water to wine with this alcoholic. You see, when you just use one word, ah, Yeshua turned water to wine. And then you bring alcoholic wine. And you just use wine to join themselves. Holy wine, alcoholic wine. You just use the, this is what the demons do. They go by links. You just use the name wine, wine to say wine is wine. No. One is holy, one is alcoholic. Jesus is not Jesus. One Jesus is Lord Yeshua's name translated. Another is notorious prisoner Barabbas. Of NIV Matthew 27 16. So Jesus is not Jesus. When you hear those who are always so quick to say, Jesus, Jesus, ah, three Jesus are they conjoined. As they have to conjure the Barabbas from down below, but we call upon the name Yeshua, whom is all there translated to the name Jesus. For what? For why? Would you translate anybody's name? That's what they've always done to us. From Daniel to Belteshazzar. Only God knows what they would have given some of us if we were still in captivity. Let's even thank God that we have our names originally given to us by our fathers. But they still try to make you change your name. Even my wonders are still correct them. If the Lord give you the name Samuel, why are you saying Sam? Sam. What's the meaning of Sam? Sam. Samuel could have his meaning, but by the time he starts, Sam, Sam, all this uh, for NTJ, cutting name short, it's not called for because you lose the meaning of the divine name given to you by your parents. So, long story short, I'm rounding this up. We see Joshua going from marriage, deal, and ties to banquet, dinner, and we are in laws now. It's good to meet together. And then Ahab, you know the wicked ones always are wicked. That's what they have to offer, no matter how they present a good, good, good face before a good person. So this Ahab now use the opportunity, they are opportunists. He use the opportunity of, let's have a dinner together. Say, will you go to war with me to Ramagilid? Ask him, King Joshua, to go and help him fight a war that Joshua has no business fighting. Ah, uh, Joshua just opened his mouth. When you've been fed, you've eaten with the enemy, you just talk to please them. If I were to be a pleaser of them, I would not be able to do the calling of God upon my life, according to Isaiah 58, 22. And that's what Apostle Paul said to an extent. If I were to be a pleaser of man, I will not be a servant of God. Galatians 1.10. Some of us know that we should do the work of God, but when it comes to pleasing men, work of God, it better choose to do the work of God. Yes, I know about Hebrews 12, 14 that says, do your best to live at peace with all men. Do your best. There's a limit, but just make sure that you are not found wanting. And be ye holy. For without holiness, you will not see the Lord. So as you are pleasing those around you, your children, your spouse, your neighbors, make sure you remain holy. Don't go to a party that they want to dictate what you wear as carnal minded ones. Or 2 Timothy 3 5. But when you tell them to be holy, if they are truly serving the true God, presenting them with the script, they do as if they don't want to look at the Bible. 
She shall stay in peace. Leave her. God does not look at the body. Who told you God does not look at the body? The very same God that said, Present yourself unto him, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and be ye holy. And be renewed in your mind. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Go and read all the scriptures. And walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Not with a attitude of, My name is in heaven. Many have got to the gate of heaven to be found you know, to be told by angels, you are not here. Your born again was the born again of our receive John 3 3. You forgot John 3 5. That says, hey, before you can enter, you must be born of the Spirit and of the Holy Spirit baptism. You will be baptized by the living waters and let the Holy Spirit come upon your life. You just say, born again of John 3 3. That one will let you see. So you got to the place of seeing angels, seeing the gate. But what's the point of seeing angels and they tell you your name is so in heaven? Vamos, depart. That depart. You will not be able to say, no, 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 I'm not going. You just find yourself automatically, you know, far away from heaven. I pray that's not your portion if you are watching. And I pray that's not my portion too, in Yeshua's name. But we must be holy. Is the point. Many people don't want to be holy. They don't want to study the scripture for themselves. They just want to listen to what Pharisee that has been condemned in John 8 44, Matthew 23. The Lord was on their case. You listen to them and you want to end up in heaven? No. They have told you that they are going from Bethel to Dam, from holy to ghost. So if you see anyone, there was one I didn't know. He also says, Holy God. I said, No wonder. Holy Ghost conjoining on the spirit ghost of them. We are Judah people. We say Holy Spirit because our own Lord rose from the cross of Calvary. And now he's in the spirit realm. Why do we have the light shining upon us? That's the Revelation 22 verse 16 light of the Son of the living God shining on us. So we see Joshua Joshua you know, good, good, good. He didn't know how to set apart and know who to be good to, who not to be good to. We are not saying be evil to Ahab. Just leave him. Don't marry into them. Tell your children you can't marry into them. The Lord is not on their side. They've gone away from the temple. They are into all sorts. The Lord even allow majority of them to be carried out in Assyrian captivity. You have to tell your children. These children of of nowadays I think they can fall in love with just anybody anyhow and start disobeying God is because you don't know the consequences of hell. The Lord was saying it, you know, either through his word or through a child of God's testimony that one day in hell, one day in hell is there's nothing, you know, that is what the price that they'll say, take all these treasures, take all this, but you go to hell one day. That even for one day, if you were to know what kind of suffering, pain, darkness, smell, all the worst demons looking ugly, what's worse? Not mere horror ever. That nothing will make you want to go to do anything that will annoy God. So you see why I'm happy that God is telling me, warn your son. And I'm just so grateful that I delivered that message then. Yes. That means God is interested in him. I let him know as I hug him. God loves you to even warn you. Don't see one that I'm, I'm being warned. This person is not being warned. Maybe they didn't sin. They sinned. They sinned. If God is warning, it's good though. If God is not warning you, you are fornicating in sin. Nobody wants you. You are even deep, deep there. That's it. Though. When God rejected King Saul, it was. Prophet Samuel that was still mourning. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Our own mourning is spiritual. We mourn that, ah, so this once now. 
this how you know true life story of a young girl that went and scattered almost well without going to more story scattered a newly married home as a maid got pregnant and died with the pregnancy where do you think she's going when she had the chance to just say okay my mistake i want you all to be at peace please pray for me forgive me if i have the baby i'll i'll come and go to you and go my way and make peace she's there fighting 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 and now she didn't come through with the pregnancy where do you think she will go let's examine ourselves and let's face the reality of all this lie lie rest in peace rest in peace we all have good in us yes we're the children of the earth like this joshua the lord was saying that there is still good in you but then the lord was saying for him going to be with ahab he married him to ahab he went to banquet with ahab then he went to war with ahab and to see that what was in here was just wickedness, selfishness. Ahab actually set Jehoshaphat up oh, by saying, You be your king, uh, Regalia, as you go to this war, but I will disguise myself so that Jehoshaphat will be his sacrifice. So that they will aim for the king. If you see anybody dressed like the king of Israel, he's a person, no? aim at him. Don't kill anybody else. So they almost killed Jehoshaphat. If not that God helped Jehoshaphat. But he, the wicked one who is hiding, and want to disguise himself as if he's just an ordinary person. A random bow just hit him. And even was still dressed like a normal person. But all his uh, breastplate and armor, the bow still finds itself to go and hit him at his heart. To show that you can hide. But God knows how to locate you. Wicked man. So, you want to set this good man up. That's why God does not want good and wicked to join. Because wicked will be doing all sorts and spamming at your face. You won't even know. Matthew 23, 28. They appear to you righteous. But they are wicked hypocrites. Like the Pharisees. So... I'm not reading because I've read in part one. I'll put the part one link there. By the grace of God helping me. I just let me round it up. You that you are deliberately even not just linking yourself by your children, marriage, marrying into a wicked family. You go and marry somebody wicked because you are rush rush. You have your dinner. And this is our picture. Who can plan all those? Who can plan? Let's smile. Let's do. Let's do all those things. Then war starts. You not keep quiet. Death threats. You not keep quiet. May it not be another scenario. See how that family finished. And both of them were in a church. Or the pastor has moved on. Check off where the pastor has moved on. They are just another number to him. Both in your church, husband, pastor, female singer, from marriage to maybe small ceremony to war and death threats. So please listen to the Lord to choose for you. Because most of these Pharisees that even may be responsible for choosing for their members as they play God in all these things. Since they don't want to point people to the Holy Spirit of Yeshua, who will lead you and guide you into all truth. John 16, 13. And because you also are born again by Pharisee level of John 3, 3. You don't bother about John 3, 5. John 3, 3 will make you see the kingdom of heaven, if the Lord even permits you to. But John 3, 3 and John 3, 5 will make you see and enter. So study the word of God. And don't be deluded by just this half message I've preached to you. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 18, I'll just read some verses. We've done it in part one. We've read it in part one. 
I and the Holy Spirit, that is. Now Jehoshaphat had great wealth and honor. And he allied himself with Ahab by marriage. Why will you allow yourself to go on, be on the other side that are annoying God? James 4.4 4. If you make yourself friends of the world, and the world is Esau, the earth is Jacob. If you make yourself their friends, you will become an enemy of God. That means you want to join with God's enemy, whom God hates in Malachi 1, 3 to 4, who are godless in Hebrews 12, 14 to 16. You go to their side, you are marrying, you are chatting, Christmas is here, Valentine, all this thing you do is being marked against you. You still bring those things they celebrate as gentle into your home. You are liable to destruction. According to Deuteronomy 25, According to Deuteronomy 7, pardon me, verse 26, 25, 26, but I'll read verse 26. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Regard it as vile and utterly detest it for it is set apart for destruction. This is how Achan disobeyed in Joshua chapter 7. Brought a silver and Babylonian garment into his home. He was stoned to death at the end of the day. This stoning to death is real. Yes, just like that woman would have been stoned to death if there was any of those fathers who are just body flesh anyway. So body flesh can never be righteous when they don't have the Holy Spirit. If any of them have not committed adultery before, they would have been liable to stone that woman. But they couldn't stone her because they know from experience that within a certain date, maybe seven days to that time, they will just die in serious For stoning somebody because of sexual immoral, while they are busy doing it. So when God said, do not judge, he's talking to the multitudes. Look at those the Lord is talking to when he says in Matthew 7, 1, do not judge. But in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2, Apostle Paul was talking to the leaders, those who are disciples, that don't even know you are to judge. So don't mismatch everything. Even in the children of God, there are apostles, disciples, multitude. The multitudes are like the baby still learning, learning, don't judge. But to the ones in between, the apostles were saying, don't you know you are to judge trivial matters. So let us not confuse it. If they are judging you, telling you what to do, why didn't somebody point to Apostle Peter and say, don't judge? Why did you judge those people? Why did they die? He didn't touch them to show that I could judge. So Second Chronicles 18, as a round of, let us pray that the Lord will lead us into godly relationships. And let it be Holy Spirit giving us those relationships. There's relationship, friendship for a reason, for a season. And the friendship that should be for a lifetime is the Holy Spirit of Yeshua. Oh, such friend we have in Yeshua. Oh, our sins grieve to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to Him in prayer. Without the presence of the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be here. And quietness is, He likes quietness, be still. Quietness and stillness, even in a quiet place, still. Don't let your mind be all over the place. Still be calm. And then the Lord will speak. Yes, the Lord will speak. Joshua went into relationship with Ahab. Big mistake. Then to dinner. Then from dinner, Ahab is inviting him into a world. But thank God for the godliness that is still in Joshua. He said, let us inquire of the Lord. If we should go. Because like David, when David was uh, overwhelmed, he encouraged himself in the Lord and asked the Lord, should I pursue those who have come to attack me? And the Lord said, yes, 
meaning the Lord will go with him, go for him, go in him, go against his enemy. So, King David was victorious. If you just go like that without asking God, that's one of the mistakes Joshua made. When they went to attack I, in that same Joshua 7, they didn't inquire of the Lord. So the Lord still did not go with them. It's good for us to inquire of the Lord. And if we have made a mistake and forgotten, let's ask God to forgive us and tell him to lead us on in the middle of whatever situation we find ourselves. So, Joshua now asked to inquire of the Lord. So, fake 400 prophets, all saying the same thing, convincing, maybe today if they were on YouTube, they will convince so many people. This one said Jesus walked into his room. That one said Jesus walked into his room. The other one said if I brought shoe. That one said he brought this. All the lie lie with their regalia tied to that God never gave them. They are tied to grammar. They've always been. If you read what the Lord was talking about, the Pharisee, in Matthew 6, in Matthew 23, amongst other scriptures, they like all this lie lie and they fabricate a lot of story. Second Peter 2 3. They are fabricators of stories. When I went to Toronto, when I went to this, there was one, even the wife was knowing. I think they uttered it as a Christian film. Knowing that all this one you are saying. You didn't go to all this place. You didn't do no no healing like this happened. Why are you making all this? And the excuse that I was giving her still is trying to help God. Because God says you like, like to help him. So anyway, they inquired of the Lord. And the true prophet, whom they have had said, you know, after Joseph had listened to the 400 ones, like, this one's Somehow, if you are working close with God, you know that these ones are not really of God. They are just copy paste. So, Joshua said in Second Chronicles chapter eighteen, verse six. Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here, whom we can inquire of? It's like none. Is you know this. Uh, under your territory of ten tribes, none, no one prophet of you kill them all, no one remaining. Then he have said there's one, but he never says anything good to him. How can he say good thing to someone who is wicked, who is in sin, who is in darkness, who is in sexual immorality, and has not even made peace with his maker? Whatever you say, even if it's the word of God, would be like it's not good. I'm going to say, ah, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. This end time. May God help us all. Go in peace. I forgive you. Are you his God? His maker said, he has not repented. He should repent or he will perish. Marriage. is not to be entered into without the author of marriage. I thank God that I entered into marriage with the author of marriage. So in verse 7, the king Ahab answered Jeff Shepherd. There is still one prophet through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. See him. See him. Hate the prophet of the Lord. How will he prophesy good to you? Hate of someone good? But I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about him. About him, Ahab, but always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Imla. The king should not say such a thing, Joseph had replied. So the king Ahab, I don't know why they keep saying king of Israel. The king Ahab, they are all kings of Israel, both of them. King Ahab called one of his officials and said, Bring me Micaiah, son of Imla. Long story short, we've read it. The prophet came, told them the truth, but, you know, they still did not believe. Even though I would say that, Ahab knew that this one, what he said, always comes to pass. So he now did it in such a way that he would sacrifice Jehoshaphat. He told Jehoshaphat that Jehoshaphat should go into the battle 
in his king, you know, royal robes, and that he will disguise himself. But with all his disguise, wherever our enemies are, disguise in whatever, if they don't come out, repent. That's even if they can repent. If they don't come and repent and they are there wishing us to be the sacrifice for their own wickedness, the Lord will let the random ball get to them. Because, as we read here, see, because what he was planning for, Joshua was very wicked. Joshua, good, 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 good. You want to good yourself. This man is planning death for you. He doesn't love you. Who cannot come to dinner? Everybody is laughing together. Yes, they go away. They say, Did you see the crush you wear? Did you see I ate that? No jewelry, no this. Finish ones. And since they are unclean jewelry, we take them to heaven. So, we see that from verse 30 of 2 Chronicles 18. The king of Aram the place they were to fight with, commanded his chariot commanders, do not fight anyone great or small, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. Sorry, I don't know when he went a bit darker to plug the plug. So let me round it up. Anyway, the instruction was given to just face the one that dressed like a king, thinking that would be Ahab. But Ahab that thought was ready to sacrifice a good man. This is why God was angry with Jehoshaphat and sent his prophet to King Jehoshaphat of Judah. In 2 Chronicles 19, after saving him, and then a random bow went to the wicked one. I know that the wicked don't escape. Whether I know them, I don't know them. I just do my own good. They will not escape. It's just that the time you go through the process wherein the Lord is forming you, making you, you know, according to James chapter 1, 1, 2, 4. My brethren, to the 12 tribes of Israel, not to the whole universe, James was writing, to the 12 tribes of Israel, count it all joy when you meet trials and testing of your faith. That process of Joseph in the dungeon, especially when you don't know when you come out, that's a process that can be a bit, you know, enduring. You have to endure it. Because if you know that, oh, I'm going to come out this year, this time, then you'll be counting down. You don't know that it's two more years, two more days, one more week. So the Lord God Almighty sent his prophet to King Joshua. Should you help the wicked? Because there was a time Joshua was saying what he shouldn't say. In 2 Chronicles 18, verse 3 to 4. Ahab, king of Israel, asked King Joshua of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramon Gilead? King Joshua replied, I am as you are. My people as your people. We will join you in the war. But Joshua, verse 4, also said to the king of Israel, First, seek the counsel of the Lord. Why would you say your people who are up there serving in the temple of God on the mountain are the same with those who have gone from better to down? How can you say in mindset that is because they were together physically having their banquet as kings of Israel and king of Judah? But what will you tell him? That pronouncement was wrong. We are as you are. Your people know. They are the people that are still obeying God. You, Ahab, are the one married to Jezebel, the one that brought in dogs, unclean animals, into the Holy Land of Israel, the one that brought all this uh, fakery of fake hair, you know, makeup of Jeremiah 430, 
Second Kings 9.30 So, they are not the same. You shouldn't have said that. But when you are there, you don't know where to put boundary. You are there eating with people you shouldn't eat. You want to say something to please them. So he actually demoted the children of God by saying we are as you are. No, they are down. You are up. So how you have brought them together to be the same by a pronouncement because our words as spiritual children of God has implication. That's why we are going to give account of every word we say. And we should be repenting as the Holy Spirit allows us to repent. So he first said that we are as you are. No, don't say that. Don't talk like that. That may have annoyed God on one side. What's he talking? See darkness in Ahab. See light in Joshua. What business has light got to do with darkness? What relationship? You say you didn't marry each other, but as father of a son and father of a daughter, you made your children still come. You still allow that darkness to be linked to light. And God does not like that. It's almost father-in-law of one spouse is Satan. And the father-in-law of another is the Holy Spirit. And you want there to be oneness. There can't be oneness. Can two work together except they agree? A mystery tree. So the Lord had to send his word through his prophet Hananim to King Joshua after the Lord had saved him from untimely death. And told Joshua in verse 2 Should you help the wicked and love? We are loving Ahab who hates the Lord. He's telling a prophet. I hate that prophet. The spirit of God is in that prophet and that prophet himself is a child of God. For him to open his mouth as Ahab and say, I hate that prophet because he doesn't say anything good to him. He has made you hear, you Joshua, that he hates the Lord. Even though Joshua said, don't say such thing. He just rebuked him. He didn't see it as a clue that I better stay away from this man before... You know, I get into trouble. But how far can he stay? When he has allied, allied himself, tied himself by marriage, he gave his son or his daughter away to the wicked family of Jezebel, sorcerer, prophetess witch, who sit herself down after pursuing the true prophet of God. Brought in her own fake bowels that she can control. Maybe some of the prophets she is controlling is the one serving her husband here. 400 of them lie, lie. They were professing lies. So, should you help? This is what I was saying. Minister to me years ago. Should you help the wicked? See the wicked have helped. Comic relief. All this donation, we give our children to school, then we donate hundreds. There was a time I, I gave hundreds of pounds at once to comic relief. I've just seen what they put there. How they would go to you know, this place and build homes for the poor. Where are the places they built now? Promise of building this people. They will build one place and show that place over and over. Well, the money they collected were into millions. For those who remember comic relief, they make comic of themselves. They think they are making comic of we who are generous, who see that oh, they are reaching out to the poor. Let's help. Let's assist. They are laughing now, but in her fire, they will know that ah, he or she who loves last, last best. So I want to round it up now. God does not want us to help the wicked. There will be signs, there will be pointers. Like Joshua, if not that is in this pseudo high spirit after eating with the wicked. Someone is saying to the prophet of God, he hates him. How can you use that language? That means he hates that person and the spirit of God in him. Then that should be the clue that, no, I'm not going to work with you. You know? And this prophet of God that you say you hate, have spoken the truth. These 400 ones, they may convince themselves. One, use instrument to convince himself. 
one do this one slap the true prophet it doesn't matter it may be only few but it's good to be on the lost side and if you may be made mockery of like he was made mockery of these true prophets but at the end of the day his word came to pass ahab was the one who died his own death and god spared joshua but after sparing joshua he now said to one him should you help the wicked once we begin to see that some people are behaving wickedly you are not to continue that help it's not wickedness just because you don't want to be judged by james 4 4 standard and you don't want to be judged as enemy of god by siding the wicked siding the <laughs> godless because of this the wrath of god is on you so Jehoshaphat now has wrath of god because he's helping the wicked this is what we must know you cannot carry wrath of god in the spirit realm you know, because because you don't see you don't see you know spiritually it doesn't mean that they are not carrying that wrath he needs to now go and say, Father, remove any wrath of God from my life, from my wonders, from my family. We are sorry. Grant us wisdom. Now that we are aligned by family with Ahab, grant me wisdom in how to deal with them so I will not be too much in relationship with them anymore because he has already made a mistake now to allow his own child to be joined with a wicked family. So we say, but God did not say Israel cannot marry Israel. But the signs and pointers are there. Somebody may be Israel, but they are not serving God. They are not living for God. What relationship have you with unbelievers? So those even who fall into sexual sin, you know, and all these things that is allowed by Esau. Esau is not allowing you. If we were in the land of Israel, would the Lord God Almighty over us? It would be a shameful thing for you to do something I even want to hide it. May the Lord have mercy on us. This generation of looking at Esau, it's okay, you're adult, it's okay, you're adult. This is the generation that don't beat their children. They just want to go against everything God says. The Lord said, discipline your children. It's not always by beating that you discipline your children. There are many good ways to discipline your children. Okay, now, go and read Psalm 1 to 3. Read it all for the next 30 minutes. I'll ask question what you, what you read there. Before I know it, this ones we have seen the advantage of reading the word of God. As the Holy Spirit let them understand. I will ask you a question now. Go and read it. That's a discipline. Discipline is about bringing them back to, to let them know that you are the parent and they should listen to you when you tell them to do what is right. So, I'm going to round it up. Are you a Jehoshaphat type of person? You don't want to be set apart. You see, if you are set apart, in all these that have happened, if not for my sister trying to buy my car, and me not knowing that, I'm going to hear that I'm a grandma, and by that, the Lord has let me know that spiritually I'm a spirit body. Yes, that's what it means to be a grandma to me. I'm not saying all oh, grandmas. I've been in my pantry, I know what that means. We love this, the layers of this house to tell me this is me being spirit body flesh when i was in the middle floor i was a soul body body when i came here within the first three days the lord took me i felt like a body flesh i shared the testimony with a sister and i think in a video i became a spirit body flesh those things should have been taught us if we were really, you know, learning the truth of God's word. It would be so easy. Just like you can say, ah, from my mom's side, I'm a Caribbean. From my dad's side, I'm African. I'm, I'm Afro-Caribbean. 
Okay. So if somebody now asks me, am I African? I say yes. Are you Caribbean? Yes. I'm both. And I'm either of the two. Well, some can just be African, African. We are unique. You need to find out who you are, even spiritually. So when I came here, I knew that even the way I was feeling, I was acting like a body flesh. But I was able to stay here. Do you know the day I went downstairs? I was not supposed to go downstairs initially. My daughter was not around. I was supposed to go to her room and use... I find room to do a video. I just find myself, long story short, downstairs. As though to show that that was how down I was when I was doing the two videos I have to do with uh, my sisters comforting me. So even for my sister calling me about whether to sell the car, not to sell the car, before I now saw the need to say, I'm going to keep this car. The Lord will help me with the payment. She wouldn't have even known about my son. Because when she called me, I was just already in the know, already blamed, already crying, already just overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed, oh Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I that is higher than I when the night is darkest is because the light is about to dawn don't give up on the brink of your miracle. Don't give up. Remember, God is on the truth. Don't give up at the brink of your miracle. Don't give up. Remember, God is on the truth. It is interesting to know that the name of the mother of my granddaughter, her name is Beloved. And the name of my granddaughter is Wanda. Is that not interesting? The name of the mother of my granddaughter is Beloved. And the name of my daughter is Wanda. And Jane Beloved. I call my children wonder. The Lord has actually told me, as I've told my son, the father, that she is my daughter. To the world, yes, she's my granddaughter, that she's my daughter. She's still part of this marriage. She should be brought into this marriage. Even if my son wants to go ahead later to marry the mother of my grandchild as the Lord wills. We have to pray, we have to see the Lord's face. She's still my daughter. And I'm understanding that more and more. Based on Psalm 51 verse 18. May it please you to prosper Zion to build up the walls of Jerusalem. I have two sons and two daughters. Before the 14th of October, I had two sons and two daughters. But now I'm referring from my Jerusalem, my walls, my the walls of my womb of my Jerusalem. The Lord is giving to me wonder as mine. And I've told my son about that. Let's see how it plays out. She's not just my granddaughter. She's mine. We'll give God the glory. He's worthy to be praised. Father, thank you for helping us to understand that you love us, but you are very jealous over us. You don't want us to be mingling with those who are wicked, those who don't love you, those who don't care for your word, those who don't even bother about 
looking up to thank you for the sun that shines on them or the food, the rewards that give us water to drink. Father God, please help us to choose our relationship wisely. Uh, for as many as have gone into sin, into error, help us to correct our ways as you guide us in the path of wisdom. You are the one that helped the prodigal to have the reasoning as he awoke in his spiritual senses to go back home. Lord, help us to make the step back to your word, back to your Holy Spirit, back to righteousness, holiness, and truth, so that you can teach us a way to live and be pleasing always in your sight, in Yeshua's powerful name. I pray. Amen. God bless you for listening. Amen.